in social affairs, distinguished guests, dear participants. It's a real honor to join you here today in Ankara in this very important meeting. And I would like to start by congratulating the Turkish government together with UNICEF and the Council of Europe for organizing this very important conference on children and very especially for putting the protection of children from all forms of violence at the center of our discussions. As we have heard already this morning, the protection of children from violence has gained an increasing relevance over the last few years. We talk more about it and we do better about it. The whole agenda is based on the Convention on the Rights of the Child and on the recommendations of the United Nations study on violence against children. And what we see is that there is greater national implementation efforts, including here in Turkey, but there are also more influencing regional processes, stronger partnerships with civil society organizations, with the academia, and also stronger platforms where children themselves have a role and a voice. This is a process I am very committed to promoting as the Special Representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations on Violence Against Children. And I have been privileged to work with so many of you in so many previous uh, occasions. I see conferences like this one as a very special platform to share experiences, to promote cross-fertilization of good initiatives and to go back home with many new ideas to do more and better for the protection of children from violence and to inform decisions not by social pressure of the moment but by evidence, good data and information. I have started my mandate three years ago and I find that we see ourselves at a crossroads. We believe that there is, of course, reason to celebrate and to feel happy by the many developments that are occurring around the world and in Europe. But unfortunately, we have not done enough. And the process that we have set in motion needs nurturing so that we can translate the vision of the United Nations study on violence against children into a very tangible reality for all children, boys and girls of all ages, everywhere. We need to scale up the good initiatives and we need to widen the ownership in society of the process that so many governments are committed to promoting. And I see the meeting we are starting today as a very special opportunity to do that, to promote a quantum leap forward uh, in the safeguard of children from all forms of violence. I feel very encouraged by the high level and wide number of experts from around Europe and also by the presence of such influential decision makers and policy makers who can make it happen on a daily basis. I feel very pleased that our discussions are being framed by the important standards and policy approaches promoted by the Council of Europe and also by the very rich programmatic interventions promoted by UNICEF and the very widely decentralized presence of UNICEF. We cannot fail in our endeavor. But the question we are addressing calls for urgent intervention. As we have heard, there are many millions of children whose life is shaped by situations of violence. It affects their development, it affects their interaction with their families and friends, and above all, it has a very high social cost. We need to address this program, this action, with a sense of urgency. Unfortunately, violence is still widely perceived as a needed form of discipline, of education, of children. They will grow up more responsibly, one thinks, if violence is part of their child rearing practice. But as we have heard, it doesn't achieve that goal, and in fact, it affects the development of all children, including very young babies. 
All the children feel so pressed to conceal situations of violence, frightened to talk about it, and very worried they have no idea of where to go to seek help, advice and support. We know that violence affects each and every right of the child. It undermines the human dignity of children. It inhibits their positive relationship with other children, with adults, family members. It provokes emotional distress and anxiety, sometimes leading to dramatic uh, situations of attempts of suicide. But beyond the impact on each and every child, of course, we see the impact on children as a group of the population and on society as a whole. So we are talking about a human rights imperative, but we are also talking about the question of good governance and good economics. And we cannot forget what the study on violence against children has told us over and over again, and we see from experience in so many parts of the world. And that is, violence is not inevitable, and it can be prevented effectively if we have good legislation, good policies, and a strong collaboration between governmental officials, civil society organization, families, and communities. So we will talk a lot about progress around the world, but just some quick highlights. We see so many important national action plans and policy action. But in many cases, policy interventions remain fragmented, dispersed, and reactive, rather than investing in prevention. Coordination across governmental departments, central and decentralized authorities, and with civil society organization is still a big challenge. Budgetary allocation for prevention and response to situations of violence is very limited. This is why we are so pleased that today's meeting will focus heavily on good practices for developing national action plans or strategies that bring all these pieces together and promote a vision of the child in a holistic manner, not fragmented through different sectors. I have been working very closely with the Council of Europe to achieve this goal and to promote the implementation of the policy guidelines on integrated national strategies to prevent and address violence against children. <coughs> These guidelines provide a very strong foundation for our work, and I am very confident that the Ankara meeting will provide us with an opportunity to have strategies all over Europe and to influence developments in other parts of the world. Secondly, as we have heard, we have many important positive developments when we talk about legislation to prohibit all forms of violence against children, to protect child victims, and to fight impunity. We heard that we have 23 countries in Europe that have, for instance, a ban on all forms of corporal punishment. We also see that many countries have specific legislation to prohibit violence in the schools, in care institutions, justice institutions, or in the streets, for instance. We also see that there are efforts to enhance capacity building of professionals working with and for children. But unfortunately, we are still trying to overcome, as we heard already earlier this morning, social conventions and perceptions that lead to consider violence as a needed intervention to ensure that children grow up responsibly. And very often we see harmful practices still being accepted in society, as is the case of honor killings, early and forced marriage, to mention just a few. So we need to promote more wide awareness raising efforts so that everybody join efforts with us. We need also to narrow the gap between what the legislation says and reality is in each and every country. And one aspect that will remain very, very urgent is to establish in each and every country what we call child-sensitive counseling, reporting, and complaint mechanisms. 
institutions and interventions that help children seek support and have professionals ready to understand their stories and to guide them in the process of recovery and reintegration. The third challenge we are confronted with is the lack of data and information on the incidence, prevalence and impact of violence on children. We very often don't know how many children are affected, although we know the numbers are very high. We know little about risk factors and root causes of violence, and very often those departments who have information don't bring it together to have a sense of the dimension, the magnitude, the reality we are dealing with. So we will need to work more in this area and I'm confident that in many countries in Europe and also in Turkey this will be an area where we can really make a step forward. So this is to say, dear friends, that I am very excited by these discussions. I am very hopeful that the discussions will be rich, will be self-critical and very inspiring. And at the end of the two days, we will go home, home, each one of us, full of energy to celebrate even more successes and to have less gaps to know next time we meet together. Many thanks and I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.